Good evening and welcome back to the Bird's Eye View, where we provide a full scope of St. Augustine's University. I'm your host, Demarcus Williams, Associate Vice President of Global Marketing and Communications, and we are so glad to be back after a two-week break uh, to pick back up on our eighth episode here in the WAUG studio. I'm excited to be here tonight uh, with two very important guests. Uh, first, Dr. Cindy Love, Associate Vice President of Professional Studies and Enterprise Services, and Ms. Stephanie Sierra Medina, one of our global student fellows. Uh, how are you all doing tonight? Good, good, good. Thank you so much for the invite. Good, good, good. I'm doing good and happy to be here. Good, good. Well, we're so <laughs> glad to have you both on. So we're just going to jump right in. Okay. Dr. Love. Um, it's hard to believe you've been here eight years. Uh, I remember when you first it got is. here, you have completed several successful projects, um, starting with build, rebuilding the, the career services department, mm -hmm. um, starting the career closet, uh, several programs, and now uh, we're now doing the Student Global Leadership Fellows uh, Institute. Um, just tell me, with, with all of the projects that you've done, with the Graduate the Career Expo and, and all of these programs, um, this past year, with all the challenges that we've been facing, how have you managed to pull all of these things together um, this year amidst all these challenges? Thank you so much for the question. I would say, basically, for what we have done here at the university has been a wonderful thing. One of the things that we have to keep in mind is that we're student focused and every one of those particular projects or programs that you've highlighted, it was truly for the students. individuals as they transition out of this wonderful institution. Amen to that. And, uh, and Stephanie, um, international student, global fellow, chapel scholar, um, several other accolades that we'll get into yeah. um, later in the show. But with all, everything that happened this past semester, yeah. um, how have you or how were you able to navigate through all of this? So I feel like the semester staff really, really helped me. I feel like they were like a very support channel for me. They really helped me professionally and personally. Because even though everything that happened last semester, I feel like they helped me grow professionally. I had the chance to get out of the country, to get out of North Carolina, to be part of conferences, competition, just to put the name of the school out there. So that's very helpful for your professional development, and that's what people need to see. I also, they helped me with my internship that I currently have with my program, the career services, as Dr. Love mentioned. So I feel like it really helped me, even though everything that was going on. And, uh, and we're going to jump into that. Um, so given all the headlines, and there's been several headlines about St. Augustine's yeah. University, and there still are. Uh, we understand it. It is what it is. Um, but what story should be told? about St. Augustine's, especially in the area of professional studies and career services and, and, and enterprise services. What do people really need to know about the things that are coming out of this department? That we are truly impacting students. We are helping them to be global thinkers. We're helping them and providing opportunities for them that they may not have gotten. Mm. I mean, when it comes to internships, resumes, mm -hmm. conferences, all of those things are so very important. Yeah. And so the main thing is how are we helping students to develop, <clears throat> excuse me, so that they can be the best that they can um, possibly be. And so the key here is making sure that students understand that we support them, that we have their best interests at heart, and that we are striving each and every day to work on their behalf. And that's what we want the community to know. And I think for the most part, when we look at 
um, them having an opportunity for internships and yeah. having an opportunity to go to conferences and to travel outside of the country, that's all for their benefit. So that as they matriculate through the university, as they then become leaders in their own right, they can pull back on some of these um, experiences and help their development even further. So we're so excited that we're able to help them by way of career services. We're so excited that we can help them by way of credentialing and helping them with some much needed extra growth and development because that's what the credentialing program helps. And so we are looking so forward to continue that process because we know it's going to take more than a degree yeah. to really aid and assist and help our students. It takes all of their experiences and the ones where they're networking and meeting key individuals that can help them along their way on their transition. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much, Dr. Love. And uh, perfect example, Stephanie, um, you know, you're a great example yeah. uh, of one of the dozens of students okay. that received internships Absolutely. Uh, this year. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about um, how the Career Services um, Program has helped you and a little bit about the internship you're doing this summer? Yeah, so as Dr. Love said, everything is on the experience, because even though if you have a degree, if you don't have the experience to be on a corporate level or in the work environment, it's just not going to work. So when I came here my first year, I was like, oh, yeah, I need an internship. But it was kind of hard because, you know, as a freshman, they say like, oh, yeah, you need to have like a little bit more of experience until your junior year. But Career Services helped me land my first internship being as a freshman. So I was just so proud of that. And I was so thankful because it's very weird to hear like, oh, yeah, as a freshman, you get an internship. So I did my internship on State for my first year. Mm -hmm. And now this year, I was like, yeah, I need to get my internship on the company that I want. And I wanted it to do it at Toshiba. And they did help me to get that with contact with the career services, with the experience that I got from my freshman year that helped on the interview, just with my resume, with the business school, all of that helped. And I'm also doing a diversity program, which that's kind of cool because you know you need to experience something different just to see what are you going to do once you graduate. And shout out to the ACBSP accredited. School of Business Management. Yes. Uh, I know Dean Sapp would appreciate that. Um, and so, um, graduation. Uh, mm -hmm. It's already passed. It was one of the largest um, classes we've had in 10 years. Yeah. Um, we've already talked about, there's been several reports of internships, job placements, graduate school acceptances um, of all of our students. Dr. Love, uh, how would you describe the resilience of our students to be able to achieve um, these accomplishments despite Absolutely. all the challenges that happen this semester? Um, I am so elated for the students that have the internship, students that have graduated, and for those students to actually really go the extra mile, no matter what they've been faced with, they are resilient they are determined and i think that is because for the staff and the faculty and the administrators we have done our very best to aid and assist them to let them know that they can accomplish anything that they put their minds to and a lot of the students know that we're behind them 100 mm percent -hmm. so no matter the you know disconnect um from all of the bad publicity that we've gotten, students have been determined. And to your point, we've had the largest class to graduate. They graduated with honors, at least um, the majority of the students that graduated. So we know it's because of the work that we have labored and helped them to be successful. And for them to know and understand that we care enough about their sense of, of living and what they're striving to be that we want them to be and the best that they can be and live up to their fullest potential. And I want to say kudos to all of my colleagues that have truly aided and assisted yes. our, our students. They're ours. Yes. We are the family that they left behind, that they left their family mm. and joined our family to be the very best that they could be. And so we all should be very excited about ourselves and what we have done and how we've helped to aid and assist these students to walk across that floor and receive their degree. So I'm so excited for them and their future is very bright. 
Thank you, Dr. Love. And, and, and speaking of that, and, and we know that, of course, um, career services, professional studies, enterprise services, which, in, which includes, well, why don't you to tell us, what does professional <laughs> studies and enterprise services, what does that all entail? <laughs> So for the viewers uh, to much. your point, that does entail um, workforce development, that entails credentialing and helping our students to have a leg up, that entails testing. And when we say testing, we get individuals to come from all over the state to come here and test. And also we talk about, of course, career services. And that is truly that um, staple that has held all of this together to help us then help students. And I will say shout out to Ms. Johnson, who's done a phenomenal job mm -hmm. in helping our students to be their very best, making sure that they are prepared with the workshops and with our um, handshake, um, which is our application that helps students with resumes. She's done a phenomenal job. And I do want to say thank you, Ms. Johnson. Yes, yes, yes. And, and shout out to Ms. Bannerman as well with the testing Absolutely. Center. Absolutely. Um, you know, the, the outstanding work that your team is doing day in and day out. Um, now, with all that being said, Dr. Love, and we, and we have one sitting right here with us, can you, can you share any su student success stories, um, you know, as a result of the services coming from um, professional studies enterprise services? Yes, we have um, several. And working with our academic department, we have students that are going on to graduate schools. Um, we have one in particular that I know um, is going to a and State University to further her master's degree. We have another that's going to the University of South Carolina. We have several students that are engaging because we laid the foundation for them. And so they feel confident enough in their ability to go out and be and do whatever they want to do. We have several students that have um, gained gainful employment with several of our top um, accounting firm like Deloitte. Mm -hmm. And we have some actually going to work um, in our financial district for Wells Fargo. So we have a lot to be really thankful for the partners that we have that have come to see that we do have some outstanding students and they've given them an opportunity to achieve. Wow. Um, and, and speaking of these partners, um, I think it's, this is a great segue to start talking about the Student Global Leaders Fellowship Institute. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what that is and, and, and what took place as we completed our third cohort? Oh, sure. Wow. That um, could take all the time, but I would try to narrow it down. Um, one of the things that we have been so um, um, grateful for the outpouring of support that we've gotten for our Student Global Leadership Institute. Um, from the Saturday sessions that students um, actually encounter. And I'll go back. Part of that is to help students to be um, the ultimate leaders that we know that they are. So on one Saturday out of the month, they would convene for the sep um, in the spring semester to help them and they engage in workshops with um, other persons around the world. We've had some phenomenal facilitators um, this year and they've helped them to really focus in on our theme that we had, which is um, why economic development matters, navigating entrepreneurship and business essentials. Mm -hmm. So that was our theme for the year and we really wanted students to understand what economic development is mm -hmm. all about. So we were able this year in our capstone project to really have a real um, scenario, so to speak. We worked with the um, city county department mm -hmm. of economic development and we looked at their strategic plan that they had for the city. And our students were able to look at that and come up with some, some real some solutions to some of the problems that they had. And I think you were there to really yeah. hear some of their um, research that they actually did on the infrastructure, um, on um, looking at businesses and helping business to be attracted to um, the um, Durham area. So those projects were outstanding projects that they really worked on. Yeah. And we've gotten great feedback yes. from there. Yes. Um, through the contributions for um, persons from the community, we were able to go to Columbia. Mm -hmm. And that meant I actually went out, had fundraising opportunities, and 
helping people to understand all of the great work that we're doing with our global scholars and just to let them know for what we have done they were willing to partner. Yes. And so that's how we were able to go to Medellin, Colombia, yeah. and students <laughs> had a wonderful time there. But it was through the partnership of everyone really understanding the value add of what we're bringing to our students, to the community, and to making them global leaders. Amen to that. Now, Stephanie, um, Dr. Love just talked about the Capstone Project yeah. um, in Durham. Um, what were some of your takeaways from that project, and and what was your reaction? What were the what were your emotions when you got that big announcement that we were going to Columbia? <laughs> so one of my takeaways, as Dr. Love mentioned, my project, my group focused on the infrastructure of Durham. Mm -hmm. So we focused on why were they missing on the infrastructure. We see how Durham related to Raleigh or to Charlotte, and we also check what can we do to make it better. And then it was very eye-opening because we saw that just by changing the infrastructure, it can help just by the quality of life. Mm -hmm. It can also help bring more jobs. It can help bring more entrepreneurship, and that all comes in economic development. So it was mm -hmm. very fun because I very I like that very much. And then also the speakers because all of them were in like a specific area, different. So it was like something different every Saturday, and that was very good because you know you need to learn a little bit about everything mm -hmm. to get experience and everything. And then when she said about Colombia, we they did like a presentation, so it was like a secret, like <laughs> oh yeah, where are we going? And then I was like, oh my, don't tell me we're going to Colombia. And I think somebody guessed it, and we were so happy we were going to Colombia just to learn more of the Afro-Colombian culture, just how is entrepreneurship there and yeah it was like very very happy news that day <laughs> that, that is outstanding and and it got a lot of traction on, mm. on social media as well now dr love you touched on this a little bit um when we started this cohort this year yes. um, you, you had no budget but you were able to raise thirty-five thousand mm. um, dollars from yeah. com community sponsors and donors mm -hmm. and, and, and friends of the university so that our students could go to Columbia. Could you, could you just tell us a little bit more? How, how did you do that? How did that happen? Oh, wow. Um, I will tell you, just really laying out the plan of what we had and what we had to offer and what we did last year. Now, last year we were able to go to um, Grand Bahamas last year, and we looked at their infrastructure there as well when we talk about um, and then one of our booklets, we created a booklet. And from that booklet, we're able to use that as really like an advertisement, so to speak, to help individuals understand what we're really doing and how students are truly making an impact. So looking at how we um, help students to learn and develop from last year, then we created the booklet and then also sent that information out to various organizations, to other um, alumni, to the um, churches, to see if they would be a part of sponsoring and helping to sponsor students to go. We had a total of 15 students to go this wow. year um, on the trip. And so we were so excited about that. But you know, it's a hard fight trying to raise money in this climate and environment that we found ourselves in. But I was determined and dedicated to the cause. And I mentioned to the students on our very last night, sometime it looks like it's darkest yeah. before the light opens. Yeah. And I will say God did his work. Amen. And we were Amen. able to truly go because it was the last fifth hour mm -hmm. when that last final payment actually came that we were able to go. And so yeah. I'm so excited and always grateful to those persons that helped us along the way. Wow. To God be the glory. Amen. And as you all landed in Columbia, um, this was an action-packed schedule for about for seven days. You all participated in economic, economic development workshops. You engaged with over 200 entrepreneurs, networked with the University of Antico community. You immersed yourselves in the culture. What activities and experience left the greatest impression on you? So for me, obviously, I loved everything we did in Colombia, <laughs> all the people we met. But one of my favorite two activities, one was when we did the cooking class with the master chef, mm -hmm. just because she was a master chef. That was like, when I was little, I used to watch Master Chef and just by her, uh, here and there, cooking and telling us how that story, how the food was connected to the Afro-Colombian mm -hmm. history of them. It was just so very wide opening and 
it was very nice to see her just do that. And then when we went to the University of Antioquia, it was just, it was very informational to see how they, is racism in Colombia? Because I didn't know they were as racist as they showed us they were and how they struggle and how we talk about how here in an HBCU and how they there, how can we help each other with yeah. that? So I was also a translator, which that was a very <laughs> fun <laughs> experience. Funny. Yeah, it was a very fun experience to be there. But I got a lot of information from them and it was just nice to experience a little bit of their culture. Wow. Um, it's so hard to really pick. I, I would say from day one, it was wonderful to be there in a different um, 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 part of the world and to really experience the food, the people. One of the things that I mentioned to the students was that it really reminded me of a small DC. Mm -hmm. I really did not know mm -hmm. that the hustle and the bustle and the people moving and, and people really making it happen. They did, and it was wonderful, and they welcomed us with open arms. Mm -hmm. It was a great experience. Um, I would say definitely working with the children because we had an opportunity yeah. to go to a community center and have games and fun and bring students um, things from um, the United States and, and have them to just welcome us because immediately they just gravitated to the students. It was a so great happy. experience. So happy. It really was. And then just to walk and see um, one of the communities where they had a lot of the paintings on the buildings mm -hmm. and each painting represented um, something unique um, to that culture and unique to that particular community. It was wonderful. And then to eat, um, fish because yes, fish was of, their yes. favorite i would say food mm -hmm. um of bread snapper and when i say it was delicious it was it good. really was mm -hmm. delicious um authentic red snapper oh my <laughs> god what it and was then, great they said directly from the coast of <laughs> colombia exactly so and i mean fried to perfection and all of the plantains yes. and everything else. Everything was so um, Yeah, good. I think we probably gained some weight for some of <laughs> We probably did. Um, but it was wonderful. <laughs> and just food for them means so much to them because it's like you're really um, I'm feeding the soul yes. and the coming together of people and the camaraderie that you have over food, it means the world to them. Um, and they still believe in, you know, having it to be a family oriented style process when, when they do eat, everyone sits down and, and they have the meal together. I think that was very telling, you know, unlike for some of us here in the United States with the hustle and bustle we may not have that opportunity to do so. So it was wonderful, wonderful meeting the students, wonderful going to Guachope and having an opportunity to climb the mountain, the Those rock. Those 750 oh steps. 750 yes. steps. Yeah, it was wonderful. Mm. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to do it, but all the students but did, did and it was a wonderful experience yeah. for them. And the countryside, just seeing it, the greenery, um, mm -hmm. unlike no other, fresh fruit, that's really fresh. Wow. I mean, it was a great experience. We loved it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, I, I want to take a big pause. Um, if those of you who are watching, you're, you're hearing the account of Dr. Love and Stephanie of this trip, $35,000 that was raised. Uh, many people have questions about the impact of donations that you're making, and you're literally watching it in real yes. time. And so we want to encourage you right now to contribute and support St. Augustine's University's Falcon Pride Initiative. And when you do so, you help the university preserve its accreditation as well as stabilize its financial uh, resources. Uh, Dr. Love, in addition to this seven day trip, there were two students mm -hmm. um, that were able to stay for an internship. Yes. Uh, Ashley Weeks, Zakia Freeman, uh, do we have any updates on how that went? Um, yes, um, I've definitely heard and I know that they're still putting their information together, but just to highlight some of that, they had an opportunity to really um, go in depth with some of the entrepreneurs and really learn what they are doing um, by way of, of um, tourism and what that really looks like and working on projects and helping with a particular project that came and for the life of me, um, I can't think of the name of that project, but they had a big project that they were working on that really helped the um, area 
um, to share with one another, you know, some of the great things that um, each of the entrepreneurs are doing. So that was very helpful. Um, I know they also worked with um, one of the companies um, to help with mental health, mm -hmm. um, because when you think about it, there's a lot of, you know, challenges everywhere, not only stateside, but also around the world. And so they got a chance to really see how that process um, actually works there. So they were excited that they had it, they learned a lot, and we're expecting great things from them as well. Excellent, excellent. Now, we're moving forward, we're back in Raleigh, we're back on campus. Um, we, we understand there's a lot of students and parents concerned about the university's yeah. future. Um, and many are hopeful that the university can continue to thrive. Um, with that being said, um, what are your plans for the fall semester um, in the Office of Professional Studies and Enterprise Services? Well, we're still planning um, as if it's just another academic year. We know of all the things that's going on, but that does not stop progress because we are committed to the cause and for any student um, that comes, we're dedicated and we are going to help them to be successful because that's what we do. We build leaders, we create them, we help them to transform into the ultimate um, professional that they're designed to be. But they won't know that until they start on the journey. Yeah. And some have had some wonderful accolades in high school and we we'll definitely seek to build on those. So the office is still working, um, making sure that for all of the credentialing programs that we have, that we're going to work with our um, academic side to see how we can really embed some of those credentials into the um, academic year and, and into the major. So we're still planning for a very successful year. I know Dr. Um, Mrs. Um, Johnson is doing some phenomenal things and working with the um, employment group so that we also can have internships, so that we can have a career expo. So the work hasn't stopped. We're still working. You know, we might not be here on campus physically, but we're definitely still getting the work done. Yeah. Amen to that. And uh, with that being said, do you foresee a fourth cohort of the Student Global Leaders Institute? Um, we'll see. We'll see what the future will hold <laughs> on that because we do know that's a huge undertaking. And so we want to make sure that if we're going to be able to do that, we can do it right and that we would have, you know, a trip at the end. So we're definitely looking to see what we can do by way of having another cohort. Yes. Stephanie, um, with everything that's happening, we're moving forward into the fall semester. Um, uh, why have you chosen to stick around and why should other students return this fall? So yeah, I might come back in the fall semester because I feel like SAU is the only place that has given me the opportunities that I have had the past two years. And as Dr. Love said, we're still growing, we're, the development is still there, and the university, what one for the students is just to succeed. And I feel like students should come here because they should experience what I have experienced the past two years. Good. And they should just get them by themselves and see that the university is still open. We're still going to be here the fall semester in person. So they should just see it with their own eyes and experience that by themselves. And, and both of you are welcome to answer this question for prospective students, students um, that are still looking um, mm -hmm. to enroll in the fall um, to start their college career. Why should they choose SAU? I would say if you're looking for a small, intimate family setting where you're not just another number, but you really, really do count, um, SAU is that place for you where we can help you to transform into the leader that you are designed to be, because we've done it already. So we have a track record, um, an extensive one. We've been around since 157 years. So yeah. we do have an outstanding track record of transforming lives. And that's what we want people to understand. We're still here, we're still open, we're still dedicated, and we're still committed to success. Yes. As Dr. Love said, SAU has been a second family for me. Me being an international student coming all the way from Honduras, SAU gave me a safe place. It gave me a place just to succeed myself in the mm -hmm. professionally and personally. So I feel like students should just focus on the positive side of the university and not let themselves guide by the negative stuff that is out there in the media. Mm -hmm. So just see what you can do to help your future once you graduate. 
Amen to that. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I just want to um, talk a little bit about the support again uh -huh. um, that we receive. And, and Dr. Love, I know you were very close to this. You, know, you talked a little bit about uh -huh. the churches helping with food service. Um, we've talked about the trip and uh -huh. everything else. There has been such an overwhelming amount of support for St. Augustine's uh -huh. um, by various partners in various areas from the food service for the, the trip. Uh, for the, the food pantry that we haven't even talked about yet. Yeah. The, uh, you know, the, the gift cards for uh, faculty yeah. and staff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that we've all um, had a chance to experience. Um, how does it feel um, to see more people coming forward to support the students, to support faculty and staff, to, to support the Falcon Pride Initiative? How, how has this impacted the morale of staff to continue to provide services to students? Um, it has been a great support and truly um, much needed. And we are eternally grateful for all that, all of our um, community persons and organizations and individuals and sororities, fraternities, all of those organizations that came to help us. And it means the world to us because I'm a firm believer that we are our brother's keepers. And for those that are believers, they really did show that. And we are so grateful that they really did because that means then we can never just be an island unto ourselves. We are supposed to help one another. Um, that's the intent. And when we see our brothers or sisters not doing well, it's not to continue to pull the water on the person that's down and out, but to uplift that person. So we are eternally grateful for those individuals that sought the need to really aid and assist us in our time of need. Because I'm a firm believer, if you live long enough, the need may knock at your door and you would want persons to return that favor. And so we will be in a position to do that. Maybe not right now, but we are working our way out of it. And I know great things are on the horizon for SAU. Amen. Stephanie, uh, from the student perspective, how, how did it feel even uh, as we were transitioning out of the semester and even, even now as we're seeing more people supporting the university? How, from the student perspective, how does that feel to see so much support coming for the university? It makes me feel supported and valued. I feel like I never felt that way before. Even me being an international student, I was here the last few days of school, so seeing how churches and all the organizations came here to support, I was just very grateful and thankful for the work that they did, because that's what helped me personally uh, motivated to keep going there and to keep achieving what I wanted to achieve and just don't let myself guide but all the negative stuff. And then I feel like to students, that's what helped them too, just to keep motivated and just to check out the positive stuff because the help is there. Mm -hmm. Everybody is outside trying to help us. Mm -hmm. So we just need to look for it and just try to take it all in. Amen. Um, in the last episode that we had, um, our chaplain, uh, Reverend Hershey Millette Stevens, she gave some powerful words um, to describe why she believes in St. Augustine's University, despite our accreditation and financial challenges. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned it earlier, Dr. Love, um, in spite of everything that we're going through, mm -hmm. um, faculty and staff, they continue to show up. Mm -hmm. Even though we're virtual right now, mm -hmm. we're still showing up. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Love, I can hear the passion in your voice <laughs> um, you know, throughout this, this show and the effort Yes. And the energy that you have put in to raise the money for students to travel and mm -hmm. to still put these programs together and to reach out to partners uh, to, to do all of this, all while still going through things yourself exactly. um, in your family. And so um, what is it about St. Augustine's University that makes this campus so special? And why do you believe in St. Augustine's University? Why are you still fighting for SAU? And why should our faculty, our staff, our alumni, our administration, why, why should they continue to fight for SAU? I think when we look at um, SAU and all of the other historically black institutions, they've done incredible things. And in educating individuals, 
to be great leaders. And I'm very passionate about SAU because for the people that are here, they're really dedicated and they have the same passion that I had to make sure that we are truly, and I'll say it again, our brother's keeper. And that means the world to me. That means then when an individual decides to come to SAU, he or she is deciding to come to an institution that has a long track record of doing great things, phenomenal things for the individuals that were here. Now, have there been challenges and are we in a challenging time? Yes. But the deal is we keep moving. We keep on turning and showing up and making sure that we are who we are because of whose we are. Amen. And when we understand that, we have to wake up every day determined to make it better than what it was the day before. And I am so excited that I'm working with colleagues that are doing the same thing. And it makes it so much easier when we're working together, when we're committed to the cause, that now individuals may see it. And so I'm a firm believer that it's going to happen. We're going to make this journey happen and it's going to happen in God's timing. Amen. That, that's a word right there. Somebody put in the comments, it's going to happen. <laughs> Hashtag believe in SAU. Uh, Stephanie, um, why do you believe in SAU? So I believe in SAU because SAU has a lot of opportunities to offer. It's, it's either or personally or professionally. And I feel like people should keep fighting because the help is still there. Mm -hmm. The staff are still motivated to help you succeed because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. It's just to have a success once you graduate, to have a future once you graduate. So I feel like that's why I believe in SAU, just to keep growing yourself and professionally and personally. Amen to that. Mm -hmm. um, I want to thank both of you for taking the time out to share these powerful, encouraging words and updates yes. um, from professional studies and enterprise services. Um, do you have any, any of you have any final words? Um, just thank you for the opportunity to express all of this and to allow individuals to know just how dedicated and determined for those of us that are here that we are going to help and serve our students and to make sure that they get the very best that we have to offer. Because when we do that, then we have done what we're supposed to do on this side of the earth. And that makes all the difference in the world because when you can go out and let people know how someone has really helped you, that means then you play it forward. And that's what we're looking for all of our graduates to do, play it forward because SAU matters. SAU matters. I just wanted to say thank you for the opportunity to be here and to everybody there watching, just keep believing, just have faith and changes are about to come. Just hang on in there. Change is about to come. <laughs> you heard it first from Dr. Love and Stephanie Sierra Medina. This is Demarcus Williams. We had just completed our eighth episode on the Bird's Eye View. We want to thank each of you for watching with us today and we want to encourage you to continue supporting the Falcon Pride Initiative. By doing so, you're, you're helping us preserve and fight for our accreditation, and you're also helping us to stabilize our finances. We are so glad um, to join us, for you to join us, and we look forward to you to join us again next week <laughs> at the same time. And until then, never stop believing in SAU. Remember, put it in the comments. <laughs> Believe in SAU. This is your host, Demarcus Williams, ADP of Global Marketing Communications, and you are watching The Bird's Eye View on WAEG. God bless you. Good night.